It is so important that we don't let our guards down. We have to remember that when we let our guard down, we are opening ourselves up to Satan. And he is the prince of this world. I remember when I was in middle school, there was a television show called Boy Meets World. And in this middle school, I mean, uh, in this television show, uh, the main star, Corey Matthews, who's I think either Ben Savage or Fred Savage or something, he had this crush on this really pretty girl named Topanga. And I think he was like supposed to be a freshman in high school. I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. And randomly out of nowhere, like Topanga just comes out and like starts making out with him. Like, and he's kind of like, whoa. And for like, of course, in, in like the show in the background, like instead of like the, the applause or whatever, they go, ooh. And of course, when I was in middle school, I was like, oh man, that is cool. Right? And so, but what, why do I bring that up? Because subtly, even in that subtle way, that Satan. In, in the prince of this world trying to control the minds and the hearts of the youth and forming our views on sexuality. Because we see, like, people making out so often, like, teen teen shows and high school movies shows and things like that, that we don't even think twice about it, that we're kind of, like, numb to its effects. And that came out, that made me think about that when I was watching the Harry Potter, even though, uh, you know, we're not, you know, there, there's questions about whether we should be watching Harry Potter and stuff, but this is before I realized it, but one thing... It stood out to me when I was watching one of the Harry Potters is when the Asian girl, like, uh, comes and, like, kisses Harry Potter in, like, the mouth and, uh, with all the tongue and all that jazz. And what they don't show is what would happen if, if that really happened. Like, if a girl really walked up to a guy and this guy thought she was an attractive young lady and she just starts, like, sticking his, her tongue down his throat, what's naturally gonna happen? He's gonna get sexually excited. And when he's sexually excited, do you think he's just going to say, Whoa, guess what, guys? Oh, this girl kissed me, and I feel so special inside. No, he's going to say, Whoa, baby, let's go to the other room. Okay, let's not finish here. Let's keep, let's keep it rolling. Let's keep the ball moving, right? But so many people, they view kissing as like something, Oh, it's just a kiss. Come on. Come on, baby. So even in this way, the devil tries to get us in these subtle and slow ways, right? And so this is why we can never let our guard down, because in... If he's the prince of this world, he's always coming after us. He's always trying to, to get at us and to form our, our thoughts. So naturally, when you're a guy and you're a girl and you're together, you have to do what? You must set up boundaries to keep you from falling in situations where you know you're going to fall. Like, for example, when you're a teenager and in a, if you're stupid enough to have a girlfriend and you're just a teenager, well, obviously, so that you don't lead this person into sin, you need to set up boundaries. What kind of boundaries? Well, you never want to be alone together. Why not? Well, because, of course, what's going to happen? You put two animals in a cage together, and what do you do? They, they mate, right? Well, what's going to happen? Naturally, you leave these kids alone together for long enough, you, then they're going to sin. But then, this, this is where the problem is. So there's two ways to avoid sin, right? Well, there's acts that I can take, preventative acts, and like virtue. And then there's also what? I need more grace, more prayer. So what's number one? The grace and the prayer, of course. Without the grace and the prayer, you're going to fall big time on your face. And you'll eat it. Now, if I'm the devil... And, and, and I want to get you to fall, where, what am I going to attack first? Am I going to attack your virtues first? No, 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 no. What am I going to attack first? Your prayer life first. Because if I take away your prayer life, if I take away your love for God and your relationship with Him, even slowly and subtly, to get you to believe that you can do it on your own and your own strength, what's going to happen? You're going to start to view these boundaries and these guidelines that you've set up for yourself as burdens. And then you'll start to rationalize them away. And what's going to happen when you take away the grace? Bang! You fall flat on your face. Take away the grace, you fall on your face. That's why it's so important to pray the rosary every day. Because it's that constant, cause that constant reminder, constant reminder of our relationship with God, of what's really important, of what true life is all about, what true love is all about. Sacrifice for the, for the one you love. But when you don't have that prayer, you take that away, you're going to go down the tubes. So that's why the rosary is it's hard. It's very hard to do sometimes. Sometimes it can be so dry. But if you persevere, it will save you. Because it's the meditation of the life of Jesus. All right. Now, why do I bring this up? Because it's so important that we remember uh, the life of St. Dominic Savio, one of the greatest uh, youthful saints that there is. When he died, he was died with a smile on his face. Why? Because he prayed the rosary every day. He appeared to St. John Bosco, his wonderful teacher, his mentor. And St. John Bosco said, Dominic, are you in heaven already? And he says, yes, Don Bosco, I'm in heaven. And then, and then St. John Bosco asks St. Dominic, Dominic, tell me about the hour of your death. What was it like? 
And then Dominic Savio says, I was so afraid. Had it not been for my daily rosary, I would have despaired. So his only consolation was the remembrance that what? That he said the rosary faithfully every day without missing it. All right. Why is it such a consolation? Because if you think about what we're saying when we say Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, pray for us sinners. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at this moment when I'm praying this rosary, or when I'm praying my Hail Marys, and when, and at the hour of my death. So at the hour of my death, at the hour of St. Dominic Silvio's death, he had the assurance that all those millions of Hail Marys that he might have said, or the thousands and thousands and thousands of Hail Marys, he said throughout his lifetime, even though it was a short lifetime, 14 years old, he had all of those Hail Marys being rained down upon him at the hour of his death. And you know what? That's the promise of the rosary. Number eight, those who are faithful to recite the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God and the plenitude of his grace. And at the moment of death, they shall participate in the merits and the saints in paradise. If you think about all those great mystics, Padre Pio, uh, Saint Faustina, um, all the greats, all the ones who have these great mystical experiences, even Saint Therese, where do you think they got these insights from? They were insights, the light of God entered in upon them. And so they had these profound insights into the divine mysteries. And they were able to speak and to write with such clarity of thought. Why? It was because of their relationship with God. And we too, with our meditations on the life of Jesus and the uh, sacred scripture and the meditations of the rosary, saying the angelic salutation, saying the Lord's Prayer, and meditating upon it profoundly and in the presence of the Eucharist, what's going to happen? We get the light of God into these d divine mysteries and to be able to see where Satan is setting up his snares and his traps. All right, the next promise, number nine. I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. There's a Sabbatine privilege saying that it's approved by the church that if you wear your brown scapular faithfully every day out of the intention to try and be pure and as a sign of your consecration to the Blessed Mother, and if you faithfully say your rosary every day, not only will Mary deliver you from purgatory, but she will deliver you on the first Saturday after your death. And if you're very good and you pray for the grace of final perseverance, maybe even you'll die at 11.59 on Friday night. That is my hope. Although with my with the way I live my life, as hard as I try, I'll probably die on Saturday, 12.01 a.m. And I'll have to wait 6 days and 59 minutes. <laughs> Alright, uh, 23 hours and 59 minutes. Alright, and then the final one we're going to cover right now. The, the faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. This is something that everybody forgets. Everybody forgets that there are different levels of glory in heaven. St. Francis of Assisi, the seraphic saint, he was so filled with the love of God that his heart was on fire. He would weep and weep and weep. Guess where he is? He's a seraphic saint. He's right there with the seraphim, the angels, right next to God. That They're, they're just like always praising and adoring and loving the Lord, right? So that's St. Francis of Assisi. Well, what about the other ones? Well, what if you just barely make it to heaven? You're like in purgatory for a hundred years or for all of eternity until the end of time. And then finally, when the last judgment comes, then you get in and you're like at the la you're like at the rim. You can't, you, you can't even see Jesus that well. You're like, oh, it's so nice in here in heaven. I love it. But is that Jesus there in the center? Or is that John the Baptist? Which one is that? I can't tell. It's so far away. I'm so happy. And we will be filled to the brim. When you're in heaven, you'll be filled to the brim. But guess what? The higher degree of glory you have in heaven the bigger your brim, the bigger your cup, all right? So to, to drive home the point as best as I can, there's the story of St. Teresa of Avila, where she had died, and of course, she's doctor of the church. She was in heaven, right? Of course, that's what we know. And what happens? She came back to another sister, and she, she was talking to the sister, and she told the sister, oh, if I could only come back to earth, I would suffer a thousand years worth of sufferings just to get the glory of saying one more Hail Mary. Why? Because eternity is forever. We want to have the highest degree of glory in heaven forever. That she'd be willing to suffer for a thousand years? Why? Because in infinity, our time in heaven is going to be non-stop. This is our only time right now. Don't just say one rosary. Say two rosaries. There's so much weakness. There's so much sin. There's so much corruption. Look at it, YouTube. Everybody's insulting the Blessed Mother. We need to make reparation for this. The best reparation is what? The holy sacrifice of the Mass. But to make our Mass more efficacious, to have more love for God, we need to pray our rosary faithfully, devoutly, and meditate on their mysteries. God bless you. God love you. Um, I hope that I see you in the highest level of heaven. Don't settle. The devil wants to take your glory and heaven away. If he can't get you to go to hell, he wants to make you have the least amount of glory as possible. All right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <gasps> Amen. God bless you. God love you. And... Uh, Take it easy, my friend.